Well, they're not moving, everyone, and uh, the reason you haven't seen us for a while is that we couldn't move. We simply were unable to move. Then she moved a little bit away. I tried to move backwards, made a horrible scraping sound against this false thorn tree that is on the left-hand side of your picture. She then sat up again and eyed Vian, as if to say, you're making a noise. And so we then did a manoeuvre, and we turned round, basically where they were lying before, and here we are. I have to tell you, that was quite an experience, having her so close. I've been that close to lions many, many times, but with the cubs, there's always just that little sense that things are slightly unpredictable. And you don't get, you know, <laughs> with lions, at least with leopards and hyenas, and their cubs approach, especially the hyenas, you know, the parents don't mind in the slightest. But you always slightly confused as to, or slightly unsure as to when she's going to start. Yeah, Sandy, it's a very valid question. You say, do, uh, am I not slightly worried being so close to them? Let's see where she takes them now. Uh, given that, you know, what happens if another animal came past here and we were in the middle of them, would that not be a problem? It certainly can be, Sandy. And that's why we watch carefully all the time. And I mean, Herbert was telling me the story the other day of when he was a tracker and he had a young ranger come in from town and got into the middle of a lion hunt. Uh, they were hunting some nyala. He said, get out of here, and she didn't listen. And they had a horrible experience where the lions caught the nyala, but right next to the vehicle. And when their blood's up like that, it can be a problem. It can be quite nerve-wracking. And it can, they can suddenly see you. I mean, it's highly unlikely, but it's possible that they will then see you as a threat. And it's, yeah, I mean, you've got to be careful. It's highly unlikely they're ever going to jump onto the vehicle, but it's not completely out of the realms of possibility. And let's see where she takes them now. We're definitely going to give her a bit of space as she moves with them. Isn't that sweet? Look how perfectly coloured they are now. And she's talking to them all the time. She keeps going, ooh, 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 ooh. Now, on Torchwood, which is not far from here at all, there are six lionesses and a male lion eating a buffalo. Who, how, where, goodness knows. Because it's right at the overlap. I think it's probably what we call the Torchwood Pride, uh, but I think they, spent, they definitely spend most of their time in the Kruger, east of us. But they've killed a buffalo there, and it would be interesting to know then where. When I first heard there was a dead buffalo, I assumed it must have been the rest of this pride. But clearly it isn't. So she will be aware, probably, of it. She would have heard the commotion last night. The others may have gone to check it out. Look. <laughs> you kind of forget, you know, I mean, you don't have the cubs for a long time. We, we've had leopard cubs and lion cubs now for the last, I don't know, couple of months. And you forget what a tremendous privilege this is and how it doesn't happen all the time. And as I say that, a bit of moisture is starting to drip from the sky. I'd be interested to know what the weather report is like on Cheetah Plains, which is slightly sort of uh, further along where this weather is coming from. I'm just going to call this in on the radio. Stations, this lioness and her cubs have now come out of the thick bush and they're mobile towards Bovosuk Dam or towards, towards Hippo Pools Road from Gwari Pan. Anna Marie, you've got a comment. It's coming through now from Wisi. You say the habituation process is fantastic. It is, but it's, you know, with lions, it's so much about the mother. The, it's much more about the mother than it is about us. 
It's about her habituating them to us rather than the other way around. Last station, who are you calling? Uh, Duncan, it's James. Uh, as far as I'm aware, there are only eight cubs in this pride. Three, two, and three. Does that make sense? There we are. No, they're definitely two litters, uh, one of three, one of two, and then this new one of three. I think I'm 99.9% .9 sure that's what the, this case is. Okay, Cuppy, no, we're with them now, they're all fine. Now he's just concerned they did only saw two of them uh, yesterday, and they were a bit worried about them. This is a chap from uh, Buffles Hook. Um, they've stopped now, they're in the block between Hippo Pools and Gory Pan. Copy that, I'll give you last position. So I don't know what she's doing here. I'm not sure why she would have moved out of that thick stuff. Perhaps the rest of the pride is not far from here. It wouldn't surprise me. We're just having lots of talk on the radio at the moment, everyone. Look at that. Playing on a termite mound. Termite mound, an ideal little spot for playing. And you can see their little things, they're, they're entertained by whatever is unusual, and that's why they approached us earlier. Sarah of Washington, a very nice question from you about whether or not the fact that they're so relaxed about us puts them at a higher risk from poachers. Um, first of all, lion poaching is not a huge activity um, because it's very difficult to... Sorry, one second. Orbs, there's a lion... Li there's a pride of six on a buffalo in Torchwood, somewhere around Second Rock. Uh, if I'm in charge there. He's three from... Uh, Gwari Pan mobile now towards Hippo Pools Road. Um, sorry, Sarah, I just wanted to get rid of that quickly so that I could talk to you properly. I don't believe... Yeah, I'll go for it. Come Gwari Pan. I don't believe that it does put them under any danger, further danger from poachers. I'll tell you why. Poaching of lions does occur, but it's normally done with snares. So it's normally done for body parts. It's not done for... Um, it's not done for commercial sale to sort of overseas markets like it would be for rhino. Yes, there probably is a market for lion parts. It doesn't seem to be a big thing at the moment. Um, were a poacher to come into the area in a vehicle like this, then I suppose it could m much more easily kill a lion. Poachers don't operate like that, though. They come in on foot because they cannot come in in a vehicle like this. It's impossible for them to get cars like this in. On foot, absolutely not. There is nothing habituated about this lioness to our presence on foot. And so, no, I don't believe that we have any effect on that at all.